Amen and amen. Well, is anybody excited this morning? Amen. Well, I want to just encourage you, amen, because God has a word for you this morning. Amen. Uh, if I gave a title to this message, I would say the Lord is speaking. Are you listening? Amen. And I think a lot of times when I talk to Christians and, and believers, amen, um, I think one of the toughest things for them is hearing God's voice. Amen. And I'm not going to get into every way God speaks to us this morning. Um, that would take a couple months to do that. But uh, I'm just going to share a little bit about hearing God's voice. Amen. First thing you got to know is that God is speaking. Amen. A lot of times we think God's not speaking. God doesn't talk to me. Amen. Or, or, or you know, I can't hear God's voice. Amen. And how many know the Bible says that, that um, God's sheep hear his voice? Amen. Amen. And we're God's sheep. Amen. And we need to hear God's voice. The problem is a lot of times is, is we don't know if we're hearing God's voice, right? I mean, if we're honest, we say, man, I don't know, was that God? I mean, I've been that road where it's like, was it God, was it not God, amen? And you go back and forth, and you're like trying to figure out, God, are you really speaking to me? Is this really you? And then we doubt it, and we check it, and we, you know, we go back and forth, amen? Just back and forth, and we struggle with that. But God doesn't want us to do that, amen? God want, wants us to, to know his voice and to be sure that we're hearing his voice, amen? Because he is speaking, amen? He has a perfect plan for your life, amen? And he has a perfect will for your life, amen? And he wants to see it come to pass, amen? A lot of times we think, well, God, you know, that guy there, amen? Sometimes we see people, amen, and they're, oh, they're anointed. But God, I know you speak to them. And sometimes as a pastor, I, I remember uh, an individual coming up to me um, after prayer one day, and he says, brother, I want to learn to pray like you. I says, what are you talking about? He goes, I want to pray like you. I want to have the relationship with God like you have. I said, you do, and you can. Amen. It doesn't take practice. Amen. You just got to believe that God loves you as much as he loves me. Amen. And, and be confident. Amen. I ain't nothing special. Amen. As pastors or leaders, we're nothing special. Amen. All we are is we're using a gift that God has given us to encourage the body of Christ. Amen. And the thing is, is God wants to use you even greater. Amen. Because the Bible says he gave the fivefold ministry for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Amen. So we just e equip. They say that those who teach can't. Amen. Have you ever heard of that? Amen. Those who do, do. Amen. And those who can't teach. <laughs> and maybe that's why how it is. But, but I always believe the Bible says... Amen. The last shall be first and the first shall be last. Amen. And sometimes the people with the greatest faith and, and the greatest anointings are not the ones you see on stage. Amen. It's the, they're the ones busy doing the work of God with no acknowledgement, no pats on the backs, no gift cards, nothing. Amen. Just man, loving Jesus because they love Jesus. Amen. And I tell you what, their reward will be great in heaven. Amen. Like it says, the people, go ahead, you can give God praise. Amen. The people you see in heaven, amen, sitting on the thrones, leading, you probably won't even recognize them. Because they be, they're not going to be the ones you've seen on TV, amen. And not that God's not going to bless those guys, but amen, it's the ones that nobody saw, amen, who get the greatest reward. But amen, but we need to know God's voice, amen. And I have a, a, a few scriptures, and like I said, we're just going to kind of set a foundation, amen, this morning. Uh, can't really get into everything, but uh, I'm going to try to keep myself from going too long, amen. But our first scripture is in Matthew 6, 9 through 13, amen. And this is just kind of going to be our, uh, our base scripture that God has for us, amen. Uh, if you're familiar with this, it just says this, Hallowed be thy, or our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forget our debtors. Amen. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Hold it right there real quick. Amen. So yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Whose kingdom? Amen. God's kingdom. Amen. Christ's kingdom. Amen. The, the first verse is, thy kingdom come and thy will be done. Amen. When we're, when we're understanding God's voice, one thing we got to always understand is when God speaks to us, it's always according to 
his kingdom and his will. Amen. God, God always speaks to us that way. Amen. God will always give you a word according to God's kingdom. Amen. And to, according to God's will. Amen. When we talk about God's will for our life, amen, we're not talking about God's will for you is for you to get a sports car and that one that you wanted since you were a kid and that you can, you know, have the white picket fence and do all these things because that's your will. Amen. Not that God doesn't bless us with our will and he does that, but, but seek first his kingdom, right? So it's his kingdom first. Amen. And the thing is, is a lot of times, like I said, we get that confused. If you ever watch that, that movie, Even Almighty, amen, not that, that, that it's a religious show, even though they, they make some good points there. But um, in one of the points, the guy who's playing God tells the, the guy, hey, just know this, that everything I do is because I love you, right? And the guy says, well, then if that's the case, then you know I'm busy. I got a lot of work. I got responsibilities. And, and, and the guy who's playing God starts laughing his head off. He starts laughing. Your will, what you want, right? Your plans. Because how many know our plans to God don't mean anything? Amen. They're so small and short-sighted. Amen. God's plans are so big and broad. God sees everyone here. The Bible says that he knows the hairs on your head. He knows your pain. He knows your struggle. He knows your hurt. God never wastes anything. He always, when he has a purpose, he touches everyone. He got a purpose for everyone, amen? And the thing is, is that his, he, he got such a big vision, amen? If we just try to limit God to what we think, we're selling God short, amen? And we got we to gotta open our vision up bigger and realize that God has so much more for us than what we can think, amen? So God's purpose, his kingdom, and his will, amen? Every time we're praying or we're seeking God, we got to understand it's according to his kingdom, and according to God's will, amen? Not, not my kingdom and not my will, amen? Uh, a, a religious spirit says this, okay? We bend God's will to fit our will. We use the scripture to fulfill our will, you know what I mean? Um, we use prosperity scriptures to, to, to make us prosper so we can have bigger, better, and best, amen? Now, God wants you to prosper, amen? But he wants you to be a blessed. He wants to bless you to be a blessing, Amen. God, God, like it says, God, God has so much more. Amen. Not just for you. He said, man, I'm going to bless you so you can be a blessing. Amen. So you can help others. Amen. God's will and God's kingdom. Amen. Is always bigger than self. Amen. And when we're hearing God's voice, we got to understand that. See, a lot of times we don't hear God's voice because we're just thinking of self, our problems, our needs, and our circumstances. Because the Bible says that he'll use everything the devil meant for evil for your good. Amen. God will, God will reverse it because God, he's a big God. Amen. And what we got to understand is that we can't limit God because if we're just God, take it away. I don't want to deal with it. God's like, oh, no, I'm going to use this. Amen. And I'm going to make it a blessing to others. Amen. Yeah, but God, I don't want to go through the fire. Save me from the fire. Keep me from getting burnt. Amen. And, 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 and how many know that, that uh, Paul says, man, uh, count it all praise when you're persecuted and you go through all kinds of trials and temptations. Amen. Uh, uh, why? Because it's through the tribulations that you build character. Amen. You, you, you build patience. You, you're able to do more. Amen. Because God is building you up. Amen. And, and, and I always tell people, God's, you know, God's not outside of the fire. He's in the fire. Amen. So, so when, God, when God does his best work, it's in the middle of the fire. It's in the middle of your hardship. It's in the middle of the difficulty. But he says, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And he's on your side. Amen. He goes, we got this. We're going through this. Um, if you've ever been uh, whitewater rafting, amen. It's nice when you're on the peaceful stream, you know, just going through. You, you get a little bored, you get a little anxious. You start goofing off a little bit, amen. But, but when the waves come and the rapids hit, Amen. It's time to get to business. And you got to listen to the guy behind you because he's telling you what to do. Left, right, stroke, do what you got to do. Amen. And God's the same way. God is there and he's leading you through it. If you don't panic, if you don't give up. Amen. If you don't throw in the towel. Amen. Because a lot of people quit. Amen. Because they're, they're, they're so scared, so nervous. Amen. But you got you to be hearing the Lord's voice. 
Amen. So he can take you through that trial. Amen. And you get through that trial. You get through that rapid and you're stronger. Amen. You're wiser. Amen. And you know more than you ever knew. Amen. You have a better understanding. You love more. You're more patient. You're more tolerant. You have more tolerance with people. Amen. Because you went through the trial. Amen. And, and Paul says, amen, that it's a blessing. Amen. Because it's, it's, it's like refining your faith. Amen. That faith is refined. Amen. Uh, we all got been given the same measure of faith, but our faith has to mature. Our faith has to be purified. Amen. Our faith has to be to a point to where we understand how to use it right. Amen. And th that's hearing God's voice. Amen. Whatever you go through, you got to realize that what is God saying? What is God doing? God, why me? Amen. And God's saying, why not you? Amen. Why am I going through this? Why not? Amen. And some of our trials, how many know some of our trials are, are self-made? Amen. You've been through a self-trial from a dumb, dumb decision. Amen. You know, you go get yourself the credit card. You spend the money. Amen. Ten years later, you're paying it off, and you don't even have what you bought. You ever done that? Amen. Right? And the thing is, is see, we, we do things to ourselves. Amen. We, we, we create problems for ourselves, and we say, God, teach me stuff. And God's man, I'm trying to next time. You get that credit card in the mail, cut it up. Amen. Don't spend it. Amen. Save money. You could have saved that in a year, got what you wanted. Amen. Uh, uh, delayed gratification, right? You got to want something, but you got to wait. Amen. But we got to hear God's voice. Amen. And when we hear God's word or we read God's word, amen, and we, and we want something, right? I remember, you know, I've, I've told people, people tell me, Pastor, I don't know what to do. I tell them, pray, right? And then, and then they're answered right back, I did, and I think God wants me to do it. Then what are you asking me for? Because they really didn't pray. They just really want something, amen? And they're wanting me to confirm it, amen? And the reality is, is that God maybe doesn't want them to have it, amen? I remember one brother told me, he said, Brother, man, I, I, I'm giving up women for a year. He says, man, they're driving me crazy. I can't do it. I need to seek God. And I said, all right, brother, seek God for a year. I'll keep you accountable, you know what I mean? And uh, we talked and stuff. And one day later, one day later, he comes back to me. He says, brother, I found my wife. I said, what are you talking about? I said, man, it's supposed to be a year. It's only been one day. And he said, yeah, but it's God. I says, why is it God? He says, well, I was giving my, uh, giving my blood. You know, you, can t you know where his circumstances are at. I was giving my blood, and, and uh, I was just thinking about what I was doing and what we talked about. And, and I was talking to the lady who was taking my blood. And so I told her what I was doing. She says, you know what? I'm a Christian too. And I know it has to be God because only God can do that. I said, brother, that's the way the devil works. Amen. Because if you made a commitment to God, you need to keep it. Amen. And how many know it didn't work out well? Amen. It was another nightmare in his life. And I said, see, you got to realize you got to do what God's called you to do. Amen. The devil, he'll give you, he'll give you an escape hatch every time. Amen. He'll rob. He'll kill. He'll take God's word and he'll rob it and take it out of your heart. Amen. And you got to hold on to what God is speaking into your life. Amen. Because he's always speaking. Amen. The question is, is are you listening? Amen. And there's so many voices in our, in our head. Amen. How many know we have our own voice? Amen. We have our own will. You know, uh, I was doing a study on brains and, and there's, there's, there's a part of your brain that is I will and there's a part of your brain that, that says I will not. Amen. And they fight against each other a lot. Amen. Now, there's supposed to be a good balance because you need a will to do. Amen. There's a lot of people who can't do. They, they say they're going to do, but they don't do. Amen. And there's other people, they will do, but they will not do. In other words, they'll do anything. Amen. It's like, man, dude, there's some things you need to not do. Amen. But those, those, those things in your mind, amen, if we're not governed by the word of God, we're going to make a lot of decisions that are not right. Amen. Or that don't pay off, that, 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 that causes problems or circumstances. Amen. But hearing God's voice is so important because when we know it's God and we know God has spoken, we know God has a perfect will for our life. Amen. We're able to commit and to hold on to those things. Amen. So many Christians, because they don't hear God's voice, they're always torn. Amen. Of what they should or shouldn't do. You know, I don't know how many people, if, if we took a, a statistic in the church in general of how many people are doing what God's called them to do, it'll be a small percentage because most people, even though God has spoken and told them what to do, they don't do it. Amen. 
I remember a brother, he said, man, God, God told me to do this. And I said, wow, why haven't you done it? He says, well, I'm just not sure. I said, well, you just said God told you to do it. He says, well, I'm praying about it. I says, what do you have to pray about? Do what God's called you to do. And even if you end up being wrong, at least you are obedient. Amen. Oh, it's been a year. God's been dealing with me for a year to do this. A year. I said, man, if that was your kid, you would beat him. Because that trash would be stinking, and it's been a year, and they still haven't thrown it. Amen. We got we to gotta make sure we're doing what God's called us to do. Amen. And be obedient to do what God's called us to do. Amen. Now, this next scripture that we're going to read is in uh, James 4, 7. Or... No, Deuteronomy, my bad. Deuteronomy 30, 19. Amen. This is an example of, of, of God speaking to us for, right through his word. Amen. He says, I call heaven and earth as witness today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. Amen. That both you and your descendants may live. Amen. So, so God, God is speaking straight through his word. Amen. And he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to place before you life and death. How many know in every circumstance that you have, God gives you a choice, life and death. Uh, what you speak, life and death. Right? Are you going to speak life out of your mouth? Are you going to speak death out of your mouth? Amen. Are you going to give your life to Christ today? Or are you going to wait for tomorrow to come? How many know tomorrow never comes? Today is the day of salvation. But we put it off. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to choose life today. Amen. And how many know if you don't choose life, you automatically choose death. Because you can only have one master. You can only serve one. But you will serve something. Amen. And you either serve God and you serve life or you don't. Amen. This is an example of God's word. He, he tells us, choose. And he, he speaks this to us every day. Choose life. Amen. When you speak, when you start cursing yourself or cursing your family by, by saying bad things and saying things you don't mean. Amen. You're choosing death. Amen. And God says, don't. Because if you choose death. Amen. It, it'll, it'll rain in your life. It'll kill, steal, destroy. It'll cause you, amen, to die in your relationship, in your finances, in your business, in some area of your life. Amen. Sin will reign. Amen. But if you choose life, amen, choose God, choose peace, choose joy, choose a smile, choose love. Amen. Choose to do right. Right. To, 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 to not make the bad decision. Right. Uh, a happy decision. Maybe somebody gave you too much money or, or something happened, amen, and, and they didn't charge you or something like that. You, had, you have a choice to choose, amen, to choose right. Not because somebody's looking over your shoulder, but because God's dealing with your heart, amen. But that's, that's an example of God speaking to your life. Choose life, amen. Somebody does you wrong. What does the word of God, of God say? It says forgive, amen, to love your enemy, do good to them, amen. And, and, and you have a, a choice, amen, to hear God's voice and then to do it, amen. And we've all done things, amen. We've gotten upset. We've gotten mad. But then God says, now apologize. Choose life. Choose to do right, amen. Choose to do what God's asking you to do, amen. It's God speaking to your heart. Are we listening, amen. And God, God uses, he'll use your conscience, amen, how many know God, the Holy Spirit will work through your conscience, amen, to wake you up? But how many times do we violate that conscience, amen? In other words, we know to do right, and we don't do it. The Bible says that's it, amen? You know, you know the right thing to do, but do you do it, amen? When nobody else is around, do you make the right decision? The Bible says that God is always watching, amen? So therefore, you're never alone. So if you ever feel like you're alone and nobody's watching to say, hey, oh, snap, God's watching, Amen. I better straighten up. Amen. Because I know God is here. Amen. And God is speaking. Amen. Remember, his sheep know his voice. Amen. And he is always speaking. Amen. Some people, like I said, they, they, if they're not reading right from the Bible, right that minute, God's not speaking. God is always speaking. Amen. He's given us the Holy Spirit who speaks to our heart and speaks to our life. And what do we choose to do and what do we choose to go or where do we choose to go? That's all depending on whether we realize God is speaking to us. Amen. Uh, this, next, this next scripture is in James 4, 7. Amen. 
It says, therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Amen? So, so the two parts of that, amen, is submit and then resist. Amen? Submit and then resist. Amen? I know a lot of times we say resist the devil and he'll flee, which is right, but it's only partially right because you've got to submit to God first. Amen? Submitting to God is saying, God, I will do what you want me to do. Amen? I was talking to somebody about this. Man, I've been trying to resist the devil, but he won't leave me alone. I said, brother, I says, uh, go to church. Amen. Go to church. He goes, ah, oh, I don't want to go to church. I says, well, then you're not submitted to God. So you submit to God. Then you resist the devil. So you, do, you live your life how you want, but then you want the devil to run from you. It don't work that way. See, your relationship with God and God's your Lord. See, you submit to your Lord. Amen. God is your Lord and you submit unto him. Amen. And his lordship, right? Because if you're not submitted to someone, there's no covering. If there's no covering, covering there's no authority, right? You can't just get a, a fake badge and say, hey, I'm a policeman. Stop in the name of the law. There's no relationship there. You, have, you, have, you haven't become a police officer. You don't have that authority. It hasn't been placed upon you yet because you haven't surrendered to that. You didn't go take the course, right? You didn't go be, uh, go to the police, police academy, right? You didn't, you didn't go to train. You didn't do anything. But you want authority. It don't work that way. Amen. You get authority because you've submitted. Amen. And when you submit to God, you have his authority. You have God's power. You have God's resources. Amen. You have whatever God has, you have because you're submitted unto him. Amen. A lot of people, they don't want to submit to God, but they want all God's blessings and all God's authority. Amen. But we first must submit to God. Amen. Be under his lordship. Amen. And when we're under God's authority, amen, we resist the devil. Amen. And then he'll flee. Why? Because how many know the devil is not afraid of you? Amen. He's afraid of the God that's in you. Amen. He's afraid of the Holy Spirit. He's afraid of the Word of God. Amen. He's afraid of the things of God. You know, one guy says, don't be afraid of me. He says, I'm nothing. But he says, don't mess with God because he's dangerous. Amen. He says, he, 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 you see how he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt? Amen. I mean, he used things. He didn't use a sword. God didn't, he didn't, he didn't lift one sword. Amen. But man, he sent the, 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 the plagues, the pestilence, all this stuff. And then when they didn't listen, he took out every one of their firstborn. I said, man, talk about, you know, they talk about the, the mafia. The ma mafia. I said, man, you don't mess with God or his people. Amen. He'll take you out. Amen. But, 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 but God is on our side. Amen. And God is for us. Who can be against us? Amen. We serve a God that loves his children. Amen. But we have to be under his lordship. We have to submit to him. Amen. Then we resist the devil. And the devil's like, man, you know what? I can't do that. Amen. But there's a part of resist I want to talk about because a lot of times people just think, well, that's just going like this. No. You know what I mean? Resisting the devil is refusing to let the devil have any power, any authority over your life. Saying, devil, I do not accept it. I do not receive it. You are a liar. And you go back to hell where you came from. That's what it means to resist. Amen. Not just, oh, stop it, devil. Leave me alone. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, it means you, t you get boldness. And you point your finger into the devil's face and you say, devil, get behind me in the name of Jesus. Get underneath my feet where you belong, Satan. Yes. Amen. And, and, and let me tell you something. This not only applies to the devil himself, but everything the devil brings. Every sickness, every disease, every lie, every curse. Anything that's been spoken over your life, you resist it and you tell it to get behind you in the name of Jesus. And because you're submitted to God, it will flee from your life. Amen. And I know that's bold because we think, man, you know, how do you do that? Because God says that Jesus Christ said on the cross, he said, it is finished. I paid the price. I made a way. Amen. I, I, I created a way for you to come boldly into the presence of God. And find favor and help in your time of need. Amen. God says he's given us everything we need to live a godly and upright life. Therefore, everything he paid for on the cross is not your burden to carry. Amen. It's not your burden. Amen. It's his burden. He says, cast all your burden on me for I care for you. 
Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 So what the devil does is come lie to us, right? Because the devil's not all powerful. Amen. He roams around like a roaring lion. Poor the seat don't got no teeth. <laughs> Amen. Jesus kicked his teeth in, took the keys to death, hell, and the grave, and said, hey, you got the victory. <laughs> Amen. But what do we do? The devil starts lying to us. Once again, because we're not hearing God's voice. Oh, you're, you're sick. You're this. You're that. You're, you're cursed. You're, you know, you're not smart. You can't do it. You're not good enough. You're too poor. You're, you're too old. Whatever the lie is, and we start accepting it. And I'm guilty of it myself. Amen. And we start accepting every lie of the devil. We don't resist it. And what happens? We're all burdened and wore down with everything that Christ died to free us from. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. And I, I, like to, I like to interject here because we just talked about, well, the trials and the tribulations, you said those are good, they're blessed, they are. But they're the trials that, that the Lord wants us to go through. When you talk about Paul and what trials he was talking about, he wasn't talking about his trials of sickness, disease, and all these things. He was talking about his trials for preaching the gospel. Because the Bible says that he carried our cross and we carry his cross, Right? His cross and his burden is easy. His yoke is light. Amen. We carry his. What is his? It's the kingdom. It's his will. Amen. His kingdom come, his will be done. Amen. It's the ministry. It's to win people to Christ. It's that we lay down and suffer so that somebody else might get to know Jesus. Amen. But the devil's like, oh, no, don't carry that burden. Carry this one. And then you have an excuse not to carry that one. Amen. No, we need to throw that one off and pick up Jesus's burden and say, man, somebody needs to hear about Jesus today. Somebody needs to know that God died for their sins today. Somebody needs to know that God died for their finance, finances today. Somebody needs to know that God died for their mental illness today. Somebody needs to know that Christ loves them so much. Amen. That he died for their sins so that they don't have to suffer like that no more. Amen. But you got to pick that burden up. The burden for the lost. Amen. The burden for the hurting. The burden for those who are down and out. The Bible says go out into the highways and the byways and compel, compel them. Why? Because the good news is, is you don't have to suffer under the, the, the taskmaster of sin no longer. Amen. What is sin? It's sin that reigned through the human race because of Adam and Eve. Amen. That sin brings sickness, disease, uh, all these things, uh, addiction. I mean, you name it. Right. But God doesn't want us suffering under that no more. He wants us to be free. Amen. And to pick up his burden, his kingdom and his will. Amen. And to share the good news that Christ has come. Amen. And that we are free. You heard it in the song. We're free. Hell lost another one. And we are free. Amen. Freedom isn't, isn't to do whatever you want. Freedom is to do what God's called you to do, what God made you to do, what God has been planning in your life from the beginning. Amen. The Bible says that God knows the end from the beginning. Amen. How many know when Moses was born, God didn't say, oh, there's a good candidate. He already knew him. Amen. When you were born, God already knew you. And had a purpose for you and called you and chosen you for such a time as this. The Bible says we're a chosen generation. He knew what time and what season we live in. He knew who was going to be president. He knew what was going to happen. And God raised you up to be a light to this dark generation that we're in currently. Can I get an amen? God knows you. Amen. And he got a purpose in your life. And so many times... We don't listen to that purpose. I always tell people inside, and God speaks through this purpose. Amen. And each, and, it, and each and every one of us, God has this seed of greatness, something to do, something to give this world, something to let your light shine. You got to release that. But you release it by, first of all, getting rid of selfishness. Amen. How many know, as long as you want to please yourself, you'll never be truly happy because you always want something else. You'll never be content with this world. That's why the Bible says that godliness with contentment is great gain. Amen. When you realize that it's not about all this, the stuff don't make you happy. It don't. It'll get old. It'll rot. It'll rust. Thieves will break in and steal. It'll be gone. They'll smash your car. I seen this car the other day. It was really nice. And we looked on the other side. 
somebody ran into it, it was like, oh, snap. But that's things. Things perish. Amen. But let me tell you something. When you know Christ, and once again, it's in the song, all you need is Jesus. Amen. Everything else is a blessing. But it's okay. Not every day has to be jumping, shouting, and, and skipping. Amen. Those days are awesome. But you have days where they're tough and they're hard, doing what God's called you to do. You may have to sweat. Amen. You may have to do things that you didn't want to do or you didn't plan. How many times you ever needed a day off just to rest and you get that phone call? Oh, I need your help. Can you help me with this? Can you do this for me? Can I do that? It's like, oh, man, I was going to do something. But God, what does God say? Do what I called you to do. Be a light to this world. Amen. Love. Minister. Do, do what I've called you to do. Uh, 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 when you need something, when you need money, God will tell you, you know what? Why don't you give this person money? But God, I was trying to save for money. Yeah, no, help them out. Amen. Well, God, I was going through this problem in my marriage. I minister to their marriage. Help them out. That's the way God works. Because in doing what God called you to do, he in turn begins to do your miracle or, or help your need. Can I get an amen? That's the way God works. But, it, but you got to be willing to give up self. Amen. The Bible says that he who, who seeks to find his life will lose it. But he who loses his life for my sake, we'll find life, true life, real life, true happiness, and true joy. Amen. And that's what God wants to do. Amen. So God is always speaking. Amen. And every time we pray, just ask God, God, is this your will or is this my will? You know, you're praying for your neighbor to, get, to move away because he's getting on your nerves. God, is this your will or my will? And God's going to tell you, you know why I put him here? Because I want you to win him to Christ. I want you to show him the light of God, and I want him to be in my kingdom, and he's going to be your na neighbor in heaven. <laughs> so you better love him, amen, and you better be good to them, amen, because God does that, amen. See, our will is God just, every problem, get it away, and God's like, no, you're the answer. You're the light. It's dark in here. Turn your light on. Be the light. Be the example. Be the witness. Amen. Don't wait for somebody else to stand up. You stand up and say, man, if no one will do it, I'll go. I'll stand up. I'll teach the kids. I'll work in nursery. I'll help out. And that's just a selfish plug for my ministries that I oversee. <laughs> but still, it's the truth. Amen. These kids need Jesus. They need help. Amen. Those, we have teachers down there. Amen. We got people down there who, who, who do it every week. Amen. But they need help, too. Amen. And they, and they need to hear the word, too. Amen. But we need people who say, you know what? It's not about me. It's about Jesus. Jesus says, when you did it to the least of these, you done it unto me. Could you imagine standing before God one day and never want somebody to Christ? Amen. Never wash somebody's feet. And I'm not saying literally, but figuratively speaking, wash their feet, care for them minister to them amen love them and hearing the least of them because like i said we've done it to people who you know we've invited people to our house and we've given the royal treatment but there are friends there are people who can bless us can help us right we invite the pastor over all the time pastor you know and we honor the pastor but he said the least of these that smelly one the one that doesn't laugh at jokes you know those those awkward ones have you done it to them to the children Amen. Jesus, how many know God loves children? Yeah. Amen. He loves the youth. Amen. He loves these ones that get on our nerves or drive us crazy, right? You know, teenagers. I mean, you ever try having a conversation with teenagers? Man, it's tough, right, brother? You got to, you got to, you got to, you got to really try. And I always say, teenagers, what makes them difficult sometimes is they, 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 they got a lot of information. They know a lot. They just don't have the experience to back it up. So when you try to help them understand, they don't get it. There's no, it should work this way. Yeah, in life, everything should work like that. But how many know things don't always work out the way they should? And when you have a lot of experience, you begin to realize that. You know what I mean? But the thing is, is one guy says teenagers are God's, uh, uh, I don't know if I want to say punishment. <laughs> But it's his way to reveal to us to see what it's like to have somebody created in your image who never listens or does what you ask them to do. Right? God said, oh, I'll show you what you are to me. 
<laughs> give you a teenager. Thank God, you know, they get out of that stage. They kind of get older. They start wising up. Amen. Thank God for that. Amen. So we got to do what God's called us to do. Amen. But we hear God's voice in those areas. Amen. This, uh, this last scripture here, and I'm going to close with this. It's in uh, Romans 12, 2. It says, and, be, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but you got to meditate on, on that scripture. Because that's what everybody wants, right? They want to do God's perfect will for their life. That's what I want, God. I just want to do it. I just don't know what it is. And, and when I think I do, I don't do it. And, and it never works out. Amen. But, but I'm going to try to explain it to you in a way that will hopefully help you understand. Amen. Because renewing your mind, to, to renew something is to, to make it like new. Right? You take, a, you take an old car and it's all rusted and dented and, and missing the bumpers and, and, and missing things that you need. But, and you begin to renew it and, and put it back together. Right? And a lot of times you make it nicer than it was before. Amen? Because you renewed it. Amen? Some, some things the factory didn't do right, you make it better. Amen? Well, well, that's kind of what God's talking about here. Because God wants us to renew our mind. Amen? Now, the renewing of your mind depends on the damage. Right? Everybody got to, got to as, assess their damage. Amen? I mean, depending on how, how messed up we were. But everybody need to, needs to be renewed. Amen? And that renewal is so important. Because without it, You'll never really understand God's word, God's voice for your life, okay? Because God does not work. God's mode of operation does not fit the world's. In other words, in God's kingdom, up is down, right? Because you got to humble yourself. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst. I mean, it's like, what is God talking about? He's, he's saying, blessed are all the things that are difficult and hard and weak. And those are, those are the things everybody's trying not to be. We're trying to be strong and proud and, and, and hardworking and tough and right and do all these things. God's like, oh, no, that's not my kingdom. You want to be powerful, you got to be weak. You're like, what? You want to be strong, you got to be weak. You got to be like Jesus because it's in your weakness he is strong. Amen. See, it's, it's different. We, we don't understand that because we want to get out there and start swinging a sword. And God said, oh, I don't use swords. But God, how are we going to win? He says, watch this. I'm going to take 300 men, a lamp, and clay pots, and I'm going to defeat 50,000 people. What? It's not going to happen. You know what I mean? It's not going to happen. But God says, watch it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do a miracle. I'm going to beat a giant, a 10-foot giant with a five foot, maybe five and a half foot kid, amen, and a slingshot to boot. And you're like, no, God, that don't make sense. I don't understand it because my ways are not your ways. My ways are above your ways. Can I get an amen? But God, I can't get it, can't get it. Well, you got to renew your mind. You got to get in the word. And, and you're going to read the word and you can't just read the words. Because you'd be like, oh, uh, okay, so-and-so but God, so-and-so, and this and that. You're going to get into words. But it's the spirit of it. See, when you read the Bible, you've got to read it in faith. And you've got to take it as God's message for your life. Amen. And I'm going to get a little bit into common terms. Amen. You all know what a computer is, right? And a computer, what does it do? Amen. You, you program it. Right? You put information into it and you program it. If you're older, you took some computer programming classes, right? And you would put stuff like if this, then that, greater than, less than, equal to, right? And you put that stuff in and then you put your, your equation in and it figures it out because you taught it how to process the information. Well, it's the same thing with your mind. If you want to hear God's word, you got to renew your mind by the reading of God's word, by the hearing of God's word. You got to allow your mind to be programmed correctly because it's been programmed by the world for years. Since you were a kid watching cartoons, the world has been programming, programming your mind how to work, 
how to have revenge, how to hate your enemies and, and to be rude and to be mean and be vulgar and perverted, all these things the world has been programming you in music and in your friends and school, all that programming, it needs to be renewed. Because if your mind's not renewed, the Bible says that our mind is enmity towards God. An unrenewed mind is an enemy of God. It fights against God. It don't understand it. It don't get it. That's not how you process it. I know a lot of Christians, you know, they'll read the word. They'll talk about the word. But when it comes to them, oh, no, brother, you don't understand. That's the east side in me. Right? I got to get it out. I'm going to fight. You don't mess with me. Right? It's like, dude, you got to renew that mind. Amen. Well, this or that or drugs, this and that. Well, guess what? You got to renew that mind. It's not going to just happen. Your mind must be renewed. You got to get into the Word of God. You have to read it. And then you don't just read it once. You got to continually read it because your mind gets corrupted. Amen. I always like to say the Word of God is like a recovery disk or a factory reset, right? You ever get a computer or your phone gets corrupted or gets a virus, right? And it starts doing things it shouldn't do and it starts breaking down. It's eating your battery or, 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 or it's deleting your file. I mean, all this bad stuff's happening. What do you do? You gotta take it back to factory. You gotta reset. You gotta renew that hard drive. You gotta get it back to where it's supposed to be. And the key to doing that is getting into the Word, amen? If you get into the Word, that can be reset, amen? And the thing is, is that we should be doing that on a regular basis, right? Because the world is constantly there, messing with us, right? Corrupting us, right? And how many know bitterness, unforgiveness, trauma, anything that goes through our life affects us, amen? But the Bible says that God's given His Word. Now, I want you to realize His Word right? God could have put, he said the world couldn't contain all the things that God did, okay? So God could have gave us an unlimited amount of, of words, but why didn't he put this in there? Why didn't he put that? Because God's word is just right. Just think about it. Just think about that God was in control of, of, of everyone who thinks that they wrote the Bible. God was in control of that, making the Bible. He was influencing it, putting it all together, okay? Divinely inspired by God, Amen. And he said, I need to put the exact words, the exact stories, the exact everything into it because it needs to be right. Could have put everything. But remember, God, God is amazing. He doesn't waste time. I mean, God created everything with a purpose. You go into nature and you say, man, why was this created? And there's a purpose for him. You know what I mean? Even if it's just to feed other animals, everything has a purpose. God didn't just make stuff just to make it. He made it with a purpose. Okay? And God's word is the same thing. It has a purpose, amen? And in the word of God, if you can think of it this way, you guys know how they make uh, like codes like within a book or something like that? And you have to get the decipher, right? And that decipher, like if you put it on an A and then you go through and every other letter is a particular, and then there's a message in the message, okay? The word of God is like that. And the Holy Spirit unlocks He's that decoder of the message in the Word. So every time you read it, the Holy Spirit will reveal God's personal, brand new, personalized, up-to-date, 2023 message just for you. Amen. But you got to have the, you got to have the Holy Spirit. You got to let God do that. And you'd be like, what? Check that out. God, you're crazy. You did this. You did that. Amen. Because God's word is personable. And he put those words in there and he knows the code and he wants to reveal his personal message to you. Amen. If you wouldn't go ahead and stand. Amen. God is speaking. Are you listening? Amen. He loves you. Amen. And the devil is a liar. Amen. Submit to God. Resist the devil. Amen. And he has to flee. Amen. Because your authority that you have is not your authority. It's Christ's authority. He took it. And he wanted back. Amen. And he has a perfect plan and a purpose for your life. Don't let the devil interrupt it. Don't let yourself interrupt it. Amen. Because God has a plan. Amen. And God's plan is always greater than our plan. Can I get an amen? Amen. You may think you know perfect life. 
You don't know nothing until you see what God has for you. Amen. Amen. I'm going to pray, and I'm let's just here. You got something you want to say? Says, let's just say something. I want to pray for you. Amen. If you would just raise a hand. Amen. And I want to just pray over you. Amen. When we raise your hand. That's that's an act of submission. Amen. Father God, we just come this morning, Lord God, and I pray, Lord God, for everyone here, Lord God. Father God, that they would hear your voice, Lord God, that they would tune in to your voice, Lord God. They would allow themselves to be sensitive, Lord God, to hear your voice, Lord God. And there are so many ways that you speak to us, Lord God. Father God, this is just a small, small way, Lord God, that you speak through us, Lord God. And Father God, I pray, Lord God, that we would just be sensitive to hear your voice, Lord God. And Father God, more than that, we would be obedient to obey your voice, Lord God. And we pray for everyone here, Lord God. That, Father God, every problem, every circumstance, Lord God, every situation, Lord God. Father God, you know what they're going through, Lord God. And, Father God, you are here for them, Lord God. And you are for them, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that you do what you call them to do, Lord God. And, Father God, I pray, Lord God, that you do a miracle in their heart, Lord God. You do a miracle in their life, Lord God. Father, you make a way where there seems to be no way, Lord God. You make that happen, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, if there be anybody here this morning, Lord God, I pray that they would hear your voice this morning, Lord God. If they don't know you personally, Lord God, if they've never made you their Lord and Savior, Lord God, I pray that they would hear your voice this morning in the sound of my voice, Lord God. Because today is the day of salvation, Lord God. I pray that they would give their heart and their life to you, Lord God. That they would surrender to your Lordship and they would make you the master and the Lord of their life, Lord God. And Father God, we're just careful to give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you would just stay there for a minute. I just want to praise the Lord this morning. I'm just in awe of God. Brother Nathan, the Lord spoke to you. showing to me that there are people here that are battling in their mind, especially the young people. Your mind just sometimes feels like it can't stop. You're battling it. There's voices in your mind that you can't make shut up. comes on you. Today is your day to be set 